Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to IEC Sunday Worship. We thank you for joining us. As you can tell again, uh, we are in the chapel. And if you weren't with us last week, uh, we have some exciting news. The reason why we're back in the chapel is because July 4th, we are going to open for in-person worship. So it's exciting news. Uh, I'm really excited to see everyone, and hopefully, uh, if we are prayerful, uh, we will see whoever wants to come, and hopefully, there'll be a lot of you. So that's why we're back in the chapel, because July 4th, we'll be back in the chapel for in-person worship. So I hope that uh, you are prayerful for willingness, wanting, how is God moving in your life? Um, so that's why we're here. So with that said, um, we welcome you and we want to start this service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are glad that you could join us online. And no matter where you are, I hope that you have a heart that's ready to worship. All right? So with that said, let me pray and we'll get started. So let's join together in prayer. Lord God, we hope, Lord, that in all our days, we are devoted to you. That there is no moment in which we try to live independently of you, Lord God. You are everything. You provide. You give. You're generous. You're also strong. And you are always seeking to hear from us. And Lord God, we have many faults. And I hope, Lord God, that whatever sins we have committed, we're not afraid to ask for forgiveness. So Lord, we come before you and we simply want to say, Lord, take away that which is breaking your laws. And Lord, we want to lift up our friends. We want, Lord God, so much for those who don't know you to come to having a knowing relationship with you so they may have eternal life in your presence. So Lord, thank you for providing so abundantly. Sometimes, Lord God, maybe we need a pandemic to be reminded that God is good. So Lord, thank you. We devote this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, please join with me as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And 
It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. No, I'm weak. Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into
beautiful Savior, God of all majesty, risen King, Lamb of God, holy and righteous, blessed Redeemer.
Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, as we continue our worship, um, we're going to turn to our passage for this morning. It comes to us from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. If you don't know where Genesis is, it's the very beginning of the Bible. Amen? So here we go. And the word of the Lord says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he has created him. Male and female, he created them. Amen. Let me pray. Lord God, as we are gathered together, we truly want you to be our focus. I hope, Lord God, that whatever is in our minds and hearts, whatever has happened, whatever we're planning, Lord God, whatever is on our schedule for Monday and Tuesday, we could just put that into your hands and allow our hearts and minds and souls to focus on you. So, Lord, thank you for your goodness. We truly are undeserving. But yet, Lord God, that is why you're so glorious. You're always so generous and so gracious. So, Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> As some of you may know, um, the 2021 theme of the Indonesian Evangelical Church is rooted and built up in him. And in the beginning of the year, we did a, a, a series on the doctrine of the Word of God. <clears throat> now we have kind of come to the one-third point of the calendar, and we're going to continue our series this week, and for the next two weeks specifically, looking at the doctrine of human beings. And in September, we will look at the doctrine of sin. And this morning, we're going to look at the doctrine of man. Specifically, why did God create human beings? And understanding that God made human beings in the image of God. And in that idea of the image of God, there are five different aspects in being in the image of God. So we're going to spend this week looking at this idea of the image of God and how we are in the five aspects of it, all right? So <clears throat> the first question that I want to deal with is, why did God create human beings? Why did God create us? God did not need to create human beings for any reason. There are no reasons or need that God had to create us. Some may think that God was bored, so he decided to create human beings to keep himself occupied. That's not the case. Nor did human beings, were they created to help God from being lonely, did God need human beings to help him? Or did God need assistance in creating the mountains, the stars, and the oceans? The obvious answer is no. God did not need human assistance to create what he created. We can read that in John 17, 24. Father, I want those who have given me to be with me where I am to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. So the members of the Trinity enjoy a perfect fellowship and a love relationship. They are connected. And Jesus says of God the Father and describing their relationship about how loving it is and how they're interactive and how there is this incredible synergy. There is a connectedness. 
And that fellowship between the members of the Trinity brings joy to each member of the Trinity. Thus, let's go back to that question. Why did God create human beings? Isaiah 43, 7 says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. God created human beings for his glory. And and some people just think glory as a means of saying, hey, God being very egotistic and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. But the idea of glory is to say of magnificence, how amazing God is. And the idea of amazing is literally add the word, amazingly compassionate, amazingly gracious, amazingly loving, amazingly giving. So when God created human beings and it's for his glory, it is in a way to see how God is amazing. In creating human beings, God wants us to enjoy relationships like God has with the members of the Trinity. Jesus says in John 15 about the loving and wonderful relationship that Jesus has with God the Father. And Jesus wants us, Jesus wants us, human beings, to experience those joys and the intimacy of fellowship. John 15, 11 says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. That is why he speaks about experiencing the joy. God receives joy and glory when human beings are in fellowship with God, and with other human beings. In turn, when human beings are in fellowship with God, our fellowship with others bring to all parties joy. It really is a win-win. And and God is so amazingly loving and compassionate and so giving that he desires for us to experience that. It brings him glory when we experience that kind of joy. So that's the reason why God created human beings. Because all these things that he did, it really points to the fact, wow, that's amazing. And the second area we want to look at is at this idea that human beings are created in the image of God. The image of God uh, really simply means that human being is like God and represents God. When God says in Genesis 126, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, God plans to make creatures similar to himself, but not identical. And that's, that's really important. God plans to make creatures similar to himself, not identical. That is why God says likeness. And that word in the Hebrew speaks to being similar to the shadow of the original. The idea that likeness is a shadow of that which is original. Human beings are a shadow of God. Because for mankind can never be God. Mankind can never be God. Thus, we are a shadow of him. And that is the idea of likeness. So it is when someone, so this is kind of an analogy. It is like when someone cooks a delicious steak or maybe a a seafood stew. As you're sitting maybe 100 feet away or 50 feet away, they're cooking outside, you're indoors, and, and you could smell it. 
you can smell the various ingredients. In some ways, you can imagine by your smell what that is. You may think, oh, my brother, my mom, my dad is cooking, I think, beef. Hmm, I can smell it. But you can't identify what kind of cut of meat it is. You may say, oh, is that a ribeye? Is that a New York strip? No, you could get a glimpse of it, or in a sense, a sense of what it is. You may get a sense that, oh, I think that's more of like kind of a, a Korean barbecue style, or no, that's a more, and that is the whole idea. You get an aroma of it, and, and that is ultimately what we are. We can never, ever be God. So that's why we are in likeness. We human beings are the aroma to the actual food. There are areas and moments in which human beings are similar or likeness to God. And that is why God has given us five aspects. Five aspects of human likeness to God that show human beings to be more like God than any other creature that God has created. So here we go. Let's go through these five aspects. The first one is moral aspect, which states that human beings are accountable for our moral actions because human beings are accountable to God. Human beings are accountable to God for our moral actions. There is an inner sense of right and wrong. Some people will call that a, a conscience or a sense of, a, of morality that is innate in every human being. There is that, I think everyone has, I believe everyone has, that sense of right and wrong. The moral aspect of human beings were given to every human being by God. And that is a sign that God exists. Because God is a moral creature. And God is the creator of all human beings. And that illustrates that he is a moral God. And when we act according to God's moral code, human likeness or image is of God. When we adhere to the God's given moral code, we are demonstrating. We're shining a light onto God. Thus, when human beings act within that moral code that God has set, they display a likeness to God. But human beings also have acted unlike God, which is a reflection of sin. So what God says is, I've given you this moral code, a sense of a conscience, an inner sense of right and wrong. And if you obey it, you are demonstrating a likeness to God. Psalm 119, 68 says, You are good. What you do is good. Teach me your decrees. So that really is demonstrating that I, I need to learn more and more that which is inside of us. The second idea or second aspect is called the spiritual aspect. John 4, 24 tells us, God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Human beings are tangible, material beings. Human beings can be touched. I can touch you. I can see human beings because you have a physical dimension. There are a physicalness to every human being. We could audibly be heard. Thus, we are tangible we are material beings. But human beings created in likeness to God 
we are also spiritual. And what I mean by spiritual is that we are immaterial. You cannot touch or see it, but it exists. The spiritual acts, the spiritual acts, in ways within the immaterial realm of existence. Not in the ways we can see or hear in the material world. And that's where God is. For God is spirit and is in the realm of the spiritual world. That is where his existence is. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12 Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There is a spiritual world that exists which human beings cannot see or touch. But this is where God deals with the forces of Satan. By God creating us as spiritual beings, this allows human beings to interact with God. He made us spiritual so that he and us, we could understand and communicate. Because we are material as well as spiritual, we can pray to God. We could praise him. We could hear him communicating with us. So it is amazing to think that we are in both worlds. We are in the physical, material, but we can be spiritual. No other creature in the world can say that. That they are one part material, but yet do spiritual things. No other creature can pray for our brother Nico to recover from cancer. Can an orange tree and an apple tree get together to pray for Bina's father's salvation? No. The word of God tells us that only human beings are created in the image of God. Thus, human beings are the only spiritual creatures that God has created that is in the likeness of him. We have that privilege to be able to pray and converse with God. And having that privilege in being the spiritual likeness of God, we come to understand how much God desires to be in fellowship with us. God says, I made you spiritual as well. And that's because I want to have fellowship with you. And that shows how much he desires for us to love him because he loves us. He desires human beings to know him and be in fellowship with him. And the whole idea of fellowship is really the idea of being in in a deeper spiritual relationship. And God says, I want to have a deeper relationship with you. In addition to the idea of being spiritual in the sense that we could communicate with God, Being immaterial or also being spirit, each person will exist forever in the sense of a soul. Their existence is eternal. The soul never dies. Is this a good thing? It all depends where your soul ends up after your physical death. So that's why God says, Let us be in fellowship. And when we are in fellowship, this could be forever. But when we don't, it's unfortunate. The third aspect is the mental aspect. 
Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So he, he really talks about the idea that even before you're born, I have a plan for you. So human beings' likeness to God is evident in our ability to be creative, in planning, in creating, inventing in the areas of art, music, literature, science, technology, and so many other areas. God is able to create mountains, the trees, and anything he desires. And human beings are given the insight and the means to be a creative force. And this is what's so crazy. Not only by inventing something that is new, right? Just like uh, a never seen before, an airplane, or never experienced, an air conditioner. But also being creative in solving problems or fixing something that is not working or that which is broken. God has given us a likeness in terms of of the mental aspect I have given you a brain that allows you to understand how to not only create, but also fix that which is broken. Human beings have the mental ability to reason and think logically, able to learn concept, ideas, or even languages that is foreign to our own culture, our own tongue. God has given us, let's say for many of us, the ability to speak English. And maybe that is the language that we grew up with. That maybe we call that our first language. But somehow, we're able to learn how to speak other languages. Korean, German, French, Spanish. That's because God has given us a mental aspect, a brain that is able to do so. No other creature can do that. Do you think a common cat can talk to a lion? No. Also, animals do not have the ability to engage in discussion of abstract reasoning or ideas. They don't have the ability to process information and come to a new understanding. Think about this. Think about all the things that we are enjoying. Again, air conditioning, YouTube, TV, computers. A hundred years ago, that wasn't even a thought. But somehow, some way, God has given human beings the mental aspect to do so. Can you imagine a group of elephants sitting around a campfire discussing how to send another elephant into space and send them to the moon, then trying to bring them back? No, you can't imagine that. Imagine how big that spaceship has to be. That spaceship has to be so large to carry tons and tons of peanuts. But we, human beings, are the only creatures that is able to send a human being into space, be it to the moon or wherever it may be, because we are in the likeness of God. The fourth aspect It's called relational aspect. Human beings, like God, has relationship with members of the Trinity. God the Father has relationship with the other members of the Trinity. So each person should have relationship with other human beings. God did not create us to be alone or isolated. God created human beings, to have relationship with others, with the rest of creation. In that, human beings have been called to have fellowship, 
to have fellowship with others and rule over creation. And the idea of ruling over creation is being a steward of God's creation. Not to say that we should lord over it doing whatever we want, but it is the idea of taking care of it. Psalm 8, 4 through 8 says, What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Human beings have been given stewardship over the earth. And it is critically important that we use the word stewardship. We're not to be destructive. We're not to be people that simply says, I'll do whatever I want. But like a good farmer that takes care of his flock, of his land, his crops, God has called us to be in relation with what God has created. In addition, human beings have likeness of, to God in that his relationship with other members of the Trinity is intimate and special. Likewise, human beings in relationship with their spouse, with the church, family, can be intimate as well to be vulnerable, to be open, to be able to grow, which is greater than any other animal's relation with other animals. Human beings are social creatures, and being social has a greater benefit. Being social allows us to grow. Think about children. Children learn through relationships, through human social interaction. Even the Word of God tells us we're to sharpen each other. Brothers and sisters, members of the church, when we are in fellowship, when we are in interaction, we can what? Sharpen, which means that we are growing. We be, we're becoming better in our walk, in our likeness. It leads to greater development. So God understands we need to be in relationships with each other. Again, it is not good to be alone. And let's just be honest. In the last 15 months of the COVID-19 shutdown, I think we have come to realize being alone is not healthy. Maybe for some of us, we have been spiritually stunted because we have been isolated. And I think the last 15 months is a perfect demonstration that we are relational. And the last aspect is the physical aspect. God is spirit, and human beings should not think that our physical bodies implies that God has a physical body as well. Nor should anyone think or ever say that God looks like a German or a Korean or Indonesian or some surfer dude from Huntington Beach. There is no ethnicity or country of origin to God. It is sinful to create an image of God, to define him in any physical shape or form. He is spirit. He is many things. So when we create something in a graven image, we are saying he is that and that alone. That is a sin. However, in some ways, human body reflects something 
God, something of God's own character. For instance, human beings can't see with their eyes. That is in likeness to God in that he is able to see in his own unique way, right? We are, there are many passages where he says, I see, I understand, I know. God has given us part of his character and the ability to see with our eyes. Just like humans have ears, which enables, enables us to hear others. Just like God is able to hear us and understand human beings. They call that anthropomorphic language. Psalm 39, 12 to 13. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me, that I may rejoice again before I depart and, and am no more. So here are human words that apply to God. But it isn't like he is in human form. He's able to hear. He's able to see in his own way. So when we have human form and human shape, like ears, like eyes, humans have a physical presence. Our bodies with arms and legs, it really describes God's character and what he does. But obviously, God does not have a body. It is a means for us to understand that he does these things. Just like us having arms and legs, it is a means to be comforted and seek protection. Just like God wants to provide protection and comfort. We read that in Psalm 63, 7 and 8. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Your right, I, I, God does not have a right hand or a left hand. But it is a way of God saying, I am holding on to you. God does not have wings. But it says, let me be in the shadow of your wings, which speaks to the idea of God's character. He's a loving God that wants to love you and care for you. So we're going through this doctrine of man, and for some of you, you may say, oh, this is a lot of academic discussion. Oh, it, it, it could be a lot deeper, but there's so much time that we could spend on. But really the big picture of this idea of the image of God, the likeness of him, it is knowing that God loves us. And he's equipped us. And wants us to be in a relationship with him. And that is how much he loves us and cares for us. All the likenesses is the ability to have a close relationship with God and to experience in some way a likeness, a shadow of the joy that he has. So as we continue this series, I hope you could see the big picture and see that all these things that God has done is a demonstration that God wants to have a relationship with you. In doing so, you will experience the joy that he experiences. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you that we are created in the likeness. And Lord God, I hope that it just makes us realize how much you care for us, how much you desire for us to be in fellowship with you and to live in such a way 
that when we are in obedience, we experience the joy and we can share the joy onto others. So, Lord, be with all of us as we go through this series. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You stood before creation Eternity in your hand You spoke the earth into motion My soul now to stand You stood before
In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Hey folks, as you could see on your screen, it's time for offering. We have the Zelle accounts, and if you're so able and willing, um, that is our way of worship because we know that offering and tithing is a form of worship. So if you're so willing, um, please do so. And obviously, if you're concerned, did we receive it or not, email the church and we'll try to notify you as soon as possible. Um, we have a few announcements. The first announcement is uh, we have married Bible study this uh, Friday. It's at 8 p.m. via Zoom. If you are interested, uh, if you want to send the link to your friend, let me know. Um, I usually send the link Tuesday afternoon, 
And you could pass that on to anyone you like, all right? Um, we have birthdays. Uh, we have a long list, so bear with me. And I think I have all the names correct, all right? So here we go. Sammy, Ancha, Ethan, Jasmine, Justine, Andrew, Ashley, John, Sarah, Lonnie, Hannah, Hanky, and Tiffany. Happy birthday. Congratulations. Uh, you are a year wiser. You are that much smarter and more talented. So congratulations. I hope you have a great celebration. Have your, your husband, wife, brother, sister, family, friends. Let them celebrate on you and over you. Uh, it's, I think it's worth it. You're worth it, all right? So uh, do, do so. Um, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are going to reopen. Um, July 4th is the date that has uh, been selected for us to reopen. Just to let you know, June 15th, the governor of California said all the mandates will be removed. And the coded system that we've been under, purple, red, orange, yellow, that's going to be done away with. So I don't know exactly what if there is any new mandates, but we do know that we are allowed to reopen. We are allowed to do many things, all right? Thus, we ask, if you're sick, please uh, worship with us at home because we'll continue with the online portion of worship. You'll be able to watch us through uh, the YouTube that you've always been doing. Um, we are just asking that you take the precaution and... If you are, you know, prayerful and you feel like you're not ready because you feel like God says it's not time for you, so be it. But what we're asking is be prayerful. Um, the reality for a lot of us is that some of us are ready. Maybe some of us are not. Okay. Um, we just ask that as of now, and the, and the things may change. So we'll get back to you after June 15th. But as of now, please bring your mask. Um, we're going to have structured seating. We'll have ushers kind of guide you, and there'll be some space between households. And we hope that uh, in doing so, not only will we be able to worship comfortably, but at the very least, try to abide by whatever guidelines that may come. Um, you know, one of the things that we are aware of is that indoors, it's a little bit different than outdoors. Outdoors, you may be able to do things. Um, so please be aware of that. Um, indoors, please, no handshakes, no hugging. Um, but again, if you do, I'm not going to stop you. Um, conversations, please have them. Enjoy them. Uh, we will have an overflow area that is near the, the house we will have um, TV and monitors all set up. The entry to the English worship will be the double gates. Um, it's near the basketball courts, so please look for that. Um, we'll have an entry, a designated entry, and a designated exit, okay? So again, the most important thing is July 4th in the chapel at 10.30 a.m., all right? Again, once June 15th passes, and if there are more mandates or different mandates, we'll pass it on to you, all right? And that leads us to a time of intercessory prayer. And the, again, the first thing that we want to pray is, I hope that each and every one of us in the church, part of the church, will spend time in prayer. Are you going to come back? And the question should never be, who is coming back? Who isn't coming back? It's simply saying, God, should I go? Should I go to church to worship? And if you say, oh, this person's going, that's not the right way. Nor should it be, I'm scared. 
that's not a reason not to worship. Ultimately, God should make it clear, one way or the other. If God says, go ahead, if you're comforted by the fact that you want to go, so be it. All right? So let's pray that we are able to uh, really ask God where our mind and heart is. Uh, Secondly, um, please pray for the leadership of our church. As we speak now, you know, there are things that we still need to do. Make sure things are done correctly. Uh, We really want everything to go smoothly because we don't want to take anything away from worship. Am I right? And lastly, uh, let's pray for um, our country. Um, There's just so much stuff going on in terms of violence, and um, it just is awful to see. All right? Uh, Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we want to thank you that somehow through uh, this pandemic of about 15 months, I hope that we really learned something, not only about who you are and how generous and gracious you are, but maybe, Lord God, somehow we learned something about ourselves. And through this, we come to recognize that we need to depend on you more and how gracious you are. And Lord, as we are reopening, I hope that you could lead us to make the right decisions. And Lord God, there should be no other reason but you. So Lord, I call upon our entire church to call out and say, God, what is it you want me to do? So Lord, I hope that whatever you lead us to do, It is because the Holy Spirit makes it very clear to worship. Lord God, thank you for our leaders. I hope, Lord, that in the the wake of all that is going on, we are not only physically ready, but we're spiritually ready. That not only we make decisions and make accommodations, but we would, Lord God, just be wise in everything that we say and do. Not for our own hearts, not for our own desires, but the truly the will of God is the most important. And Lord, we see in this country so many good things, but we also see so much evil. We see a lot of lies. We see a lot of violence. We see a lot of twisting of truth. Lord God, we understand that Satan is at work. He is active. Allow us to see through that. And Lord God, as much darkness there is, we're called to be light. We're we're an example of the awesome gospel of Jesus Christ. So Lord God, when people see us, I hope they see hope. They see goodness and righteousness. That they'll see Jesus Christ. So, Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you could join us, let us all stand together, and I'll close us with a benediction. So let's all stand, and I'll close. Here we go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit allow us to understand how big, how wide, how deep God's love for us because we are created in the image of God. Amen. Thank you, folks. Praise the Father.